Welcome to the history of North America. I'm Mark Vinette. Conquistadors were the cavaliers, knights, soldiers, and explorers of the Iberian empires during the Age of Exploration, who sailed the oceans, conquering territory, opening trade routes, and bringing colonialism to much of the world, including southern North America. Hernando de Soto was a Spanish explorer and conquistador who led the first European expedition deep into the territory of the modern-day southeastern United States, searching for gold and a passage to China. Along the way, he became the first European documented as having crossed the Mississippi River. Let's listen to more about this famous North American expedition, generously presented by LibriVox. On glancing at a map of America, we are at once struck by the mighty river Mississippi, which, with its countless branches, gathers the water of an immense valley and rolls its accumulated floods to the Gulf of Mexico, affording a line of uninterrupted communication for thousands of miles. So large a stream, so important a means of entering the heart of the continent, could not long remain unknown. Columbus himself entered the Gulf of Mexico, but the southern coast only was explored by the discoverer of the New World. Several expeditions were now fitted out to explore and reduce the realms of Florida. Brilliant, daring, and adventurous attempts they were. The Atlantic expedition in the spring of 1539 was commanded by the successful Ferdinand de Soto, who had risen by the conquest of Peru to rank and wealth, and was now governor of the rich island of Cuba. With a force far superior to any that had yet landed on the continent, he entered Florida, and with his gallant array, struck into the unknown interior. The Rio del Espiritu de Santo, in other words, the Mississippi, was not unknown to him, for after proceeding westward and turning slightly northeast, here began his second campaign. Lured by the glittering promises of an Indian guide, he marched to the northeast, crossing the Altamaha, and perhaps entered the territory of Carolina. Weary with a march of 1,200 miles, his men were fain to settle there. But no, on they must go, and turning northward, he traversed unconsciously the golden sands of the Chalaques, with a heavy heart, for it was poor in maize. At last he reached a great river by the western course, and with his mind still full of great hopes from the river Espiritu Santo, he took the Cusa for the Mississippi, and traced it to its source. Then, following down its gentle current, crossing as villages invited him, he reached Mavia to waste the lives and property of his men in a terrible contest with the gigantic Tuscaloosa, the chieftain of the land. Here any but the resolute Soto would have renounced his schemes and joined his vessels in Pensacola Bay, but no, though winter was coming on, he marched north, fighting his way across river after river to the heart of the Chickasaw country, and wintered there, although they too burned their village in which the invaders were quartered. Thence he marched northwest to the country of the Alabamons, who threw up a palisade entrenchment to prevent his passage. With considerable loss, De Soto carried it, and captured corn enough to carry him across the desert land to Quizquiz, and here at last he really came to the long-sought Rio del Espiritu Santo. It was the Mississippi. Here all doubt vanishes. Listen to the characteristic description of the most detailed narrative. The river, says the unknown Portuguese, was almost half a league broad. If a man stood still on the other side, it could not be discerned whether he was a man or no. The river was of great depth and of a strong current. The water was always muddy. There came down the river continually many trees and timber, which the force of the water and stream brought down, and the inhabitants were not unworthy of the great river. The cacique came with two hundred canoes full of Indians with their bows and arrows, painted with great plumes of white and many colored feathers, with shields in their hands, wherewith they defended the rowers on both sides, and the men of war stood from the head to the stern, with their bows and arrows in their hands. The canoe wherein the cacique sat had a canopy over the stern, and he sat beneath it, and so were the other canoes of the principal Indians. And from under the canopy where the chief man sat, he commanded and governed the other people. From the frequent mention of the river in Biadma's narrative, we may infer that allusion to it was suppressed, or at most mysteriously made by Devaka, and that it was supposed to be the key to his land of gold. 
Certain it is that their hopes seem here to brighten. They build boats, the first European craft to traverse the river, and crossed to the western side some twenty or thirty miles, as modern investigators tell us, below the mouth of the Arkansas. The county, now reached by the Spaniards, was one of large and populous towns, well defended by walls and towers, pierced with regular loopholes, and surrounded by well-made ditches. De Soto ascended the river, and, striking on a higher, drier, and more Champagne county than he had yet seen, proceeded onward to Pacaha, a place it would not be easy now to locate. The Mississippi was thus explored for a considerable distance, but far other than commercial or colonial projects filled the mind of De Soto. He stood by what he knew an outlet to the sea, a great artery of the continent, but his splendid array had dwindled down, and the rich realm had not yet rewarded his many toils. Nerved by despair, he marched northeast till he found himself among the wandering Indians of the plains with their portable cabins. This was his highest point, and could not have been far from the Missouri. He then turned southwest again to the Arkansas, at the large town of Quigata, to seek guides to lead them to the southern sea. But Calagoa, beyond the mountains, tempted him to the northwest again. Yet Calagoa ill repaid their toil. It was poorer than the well-built towns they had left behind. Striking west and southwest again, he seems to have once more reached the Arkansas at Cayas, and ascended it to the town of Tanico, with its lakes of hot water and saline marshes. Turning then to the south and east, he again reached Viconque, also on the Arkansas, and wintering there, descended it in the spring of 1542, to die on the banks of the Mississippi. De Soto was now dead. The expedition was abandoned. The only object was to leave the fatal country. His men, despaired of reaching the gulf by the Mississippi, struck westward in hopes of reaching New Spain. Disheartened at the prospect before them, his men returned to the Mississippi, descending above Guecoya, where De Soto had died, entered at Aminoya, and, working up all their chains and iron into nails, began to build vessels to navigate the Mississippi. Here, seven brigantines were constructed, well made, save that the planks were thin, because the nails were short, and were not pitched, nor had any decks to keep the water from coming in. Instead of decks they laid planks, whereon the mariners might run to trim their sail, and the people might refresh themselves above and below. They were finished in June, and the flood came up to the town to seek the brigantines, from whence they carried them by water to the river. Thus 322 Spaniards sailed from Minoya on the 2nd of July, 1543. On the 18th day they reached the Gulf of Mexico, after having sailed, as they computed, 250 leagues down the river, the first who sailed down the great river to the opening gulf. Such is, in brief, the history of the Mississippi as explored by De Soto. Hernando de Soto's failed North American expedition was a vast undertaking that ultimately led to his death of a fever in 1542 on the banks of the Mississippi River. The actual site of his burial is not known, however. It was said that de Soto's men wrapped his corpse in blankets, weighed with sand, and sank it in the middle of the Mississippi River. Please consider supporting our History of North America series in the following ways. Join our growing community on Patreon. We offer lots of membership benefits, including artworks and books. Receive an ebook welcome gift upon joining. Donate with PayPal and also receive an ebook. I've written many historical nonfiction and fiction books, including exciting international historical mystery and suspense thrillers. One such novel, The Morning Sun, features a young woman named Andalusia who originates from Spain. All my books are available in print and digital format on Amazon. If you shop Amazon for books or anything else, make sure to use our free link so Amazon knows who sent you, thereby giving us extra credit with no supplemental cost to you. All links appear in this show's description and on our website at markvinet.com. Spread the word to family and friends. And remember, all positive ratings, reviews, feedback, and comments are appreciated. This helps us expand our audience. I'm Mark Vinette, and I hope you're enjoying the ride.